today on the Scott Thompson Show on AM 900 CHML. We talked about this earlier on in the week uh, that First Lady Barbara Bush was uh, not receiving any more medical treatment and, uh, of course, had uh, just decided uh, for comfort care. Two days after it was released uh, that she was in ailing health and had, had, choose, had, for, uh, sorry, had chosen to move forward with comfort care. To talk more about all of this, Andrew Oak is with us, author, speaker, and award-winning television producer, FirstLadiesMan.com. we got a clip here before we get started. We had a wonderful visit. She was strong, lucid. Uh, funny, uh, still. Funny. She and I were needling each other. And the <laughs> doctor came in, and she turned to the doctor and said, you want to know why George W. is the way he is? And the doctor looked somewhat surprised. She said, because I drank and smoked when I was pregnant with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, of course, uh, George W. Uh, and his wife talking about the passing uh, of his mother. Let's bring in Andrew Oak, author, speaker, award-winning television producer, firstladiesman.com, of course, has done specials on this issue. Andrew, thanks for taking the time again. We appreciate this. No, I, I appreciate being back on with you. I don't think either of us are, are surprised that I'm back on, but we didn't know that it would be this soon. But but what a wonderful clip you just played there, which which really just shows the spirit and light of this woman right up till the very end. You know, I, I wrote in a blog today, she would seem, she and I have no idea of this, just my perception, she would seem as comfortable uh, baking a pie or riding a lawn tractor as she would talking to a black tie event uh, in regard to raising money for cancer research. Well, you, you have it. You, you, you've hit the nail on the head, and this is the, this is the reason for her broad appeal. And something that I've been thinking a lot about today, you know, 92 years with 73 years of marriage and everything that she's accomplished and being in the public eye for as long as she is, and you can't find anyone that'll say a bad thing about her. Hmm. That is an accomplishment of a hundred lifetimes, let alone one. It's, it's truly remarkable, the reputation she has and how many people are coming forward to speak so kindly about her. Are you surprised at the response to her passing? I, I, I really am not. You know, it's, it's just what you said. She could be baking a cake, riding a tractor, uh, uh, poking fun at herself, poking fun at, at her, her former president's son or, or, or her husband, always joking. I mean, the last few times we saw her publicly, she was ailing. We didn't know this. That's, that's no surprise because of the strong woman she was. And she was pushing her husband, also ailing, in a wheelchair. Mm. I, I mean, this is a remarkably strong woman, mentally, physically, and the effort that she put in with, with seemingly effortless abilities. She was not a big, hey, look at me kind of lady. She was not uh, after the spotlight or after accolades. She just very humbly, very effectively, and very gracefully did a lot of good things for a lot of people, and her legacy will far outlive her or me or you. It's sort of that old-fashioned get-her-done attitude, isn't it? It really is. You know, she's part of the what Tom Brokaw called the greatest generation. When she started dating George H.W. Bush, uh, he was a soldier. He was one of the youngest pilots uh, in World War II. I mean, these were people that just got the job done because it needed to get done, and they did it without fanfare or without great pomp and circumstance, and these are the kind of people you want on your side, and this is why there aren't people that are, are saying bad things about her or haven't said any bad things about her over the years. You know, another thing that, that, that struck me is, is, is sort of falling in line with that clip that you played at the top. When, when Barbara Bush was asked about her image and saying that people didn't think she was, you know, one of the more attractive first ladies, she said she was a fine-looking woman. She just didn't dress very well. I, I mean, <laughs> she knew what her limitations were. She knew oh. where she was effective, and she knew how to get a job done. And, and in family interviews uh, of recent years, where all, the, all the, the family would be around the table and kind of getting teary-eyed and misty over reminiscing, and this is, she'd say, oh, pull it together, everyone. Come on, pull, it, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. She really was, a, she really was as her uh, son, George W., called her, the enforcer. She ran that family. Hmm. Uh, I had heard that her husband was, uh, even though he's obviously in ill health, he was by her side for these last uh, few days and moments and, and was holding her hand the entire time uh, during those last moments. We know he has health issues. How, how do you think he's going to handle all this? Well, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm far from a doctor, but I do know that there's, there's a reason why these people lived into their 90s. There's a reason 
why he was one of the youngest Navy pilots, uh, uh, bomber fighter. There's a reason why their family has, has lasted in the public eye as long as they have, and the reason why they've held offices and CIA and, and, and foreign assignments and everything else with Barbara Bush right there along with him. I mean, you know, it could obviously go either way. I hate to even speculate, but I think with a family that strong who has persevered so many ups and downs and so many years in the public eye, I, I think he'll do just fine because he's got such a fantastic support group. And keep in mind... You know, the Bushes lost their first daughter, Robin, yeah. uh, at a very early age. It's, it's either the, the second or third child that the Bushes had together. And this young girl died uh, for just before she was four. And the Bushes were told, this one's just not going to make it. You know, it's best to probably go home and, and let her pass on and, and have the time that you have with her. But the Bushes didn't take that for an answer. They, they sought treatment, even though there was less medical treatment for leukemia, childhood leukemia. Uh, back then than there is now, but they took her to all the places they could and got as much out of uh, the research and the treatment as they could to, to spend as much time with their daughter. They're, 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 they're just not a take-no-for-an-answer kind of kind of family, and I, I think that will help all of them moving forward with this. Talk a little bit, uh, talk a little, a little bit, Andrew, about her politics. Uh, again, we've described her, what she's like, uh, salt of the earth, um, you know, one of those just-get-her-done kind of people. But she was very progressive. Uh, I understand in her autobiography, uh, she said that she did speak out uh, to her husband about legal abortion and opposed the sale of assault weapons, which are pretty progressive um, pretty progressive positions considering who she was in her age. Absolutely. Uh, she, she very often disagreed with her husband, and Barbara Bush and President H.W. Bush come from an almost lost area era of bipartisan politics where people actually did discuss things and compromise for the greater good. Uh, politicking was more of a skill as opposed to a, a yelling match or just standing your ground. They knew what compromise meant, and, and when Barbara Bush, who loved to entertain, uh, loved to have parties, uh, she, would have, she didn't care what political party you were from. She took a page out of the old Dolly Madison playbook and invited both sides of the aisle to all kinds of social engagement, engagements and knew that once everyone's guard was down and the gloves were off and people could talk as human beings, we were more alike than different anyway, and that's how you get compromise done. But you're absolutely right. A lot of her positions did not line in with her husband's thinking or her husband's uh, party politics or anything along those lines. But she was a she spoke her mind. If, if she felt it, she said it. And if she said it, she meant it. And she was uh, uh, she could joke around with the best of them. But when she meant business, she meant business. Americans obviously processing this, uh, looking at the past times that have been and then obviously at the present. Uh, did, was it any more stable then than it is now? Does it? What do you think the Bushes will, would be saying about what's happening now in the White House? Well, well you, you know, I, Mrs. Bush was 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 very vocal on the campaign trail. I thought something was very interesting during the C-SPAN series that I produced. Mrs. Bush sat down and, and interviewed with us, and she said, "I would think that Americans can find someone with a different last name, someone other than Bush, yeah. other than Clinton." You know, she. She knew that the resources were going to have to come from another pool and another another uh, 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 stable of, of of young politicians. But but when her son needed her and when her son jumped in, uh, she stood up to his character because she believed in him and and, and knew that that he would do the the best job that he could. So she's always a mother. She's always stepping in to to uh, defend the family, to support the family, to campaign for the family. But she did know that things needed to move in a different direction and was actually, you know, in, in my opinion, calling out to Americans to stand up. It's time to pass the torch, you know. She and, and, and former President H.W. Uh, Bush were, were in their 90, or late 80s, early 90s at the, at the time, and were ready to move on and ready to be, be the grandparents that, that everyone thinks them to be. Talk a little bit about her philanthropy. Uh, obviously, we knew she was involved with literacy and, and, and loved to see children learn and such, but did a lot of stuff without the recognition that a lot of people get when they do such things. Talk about her philanthropy. For sure, 100%. I mean, the literacy, obviously, as you mentioned, at the top of the list. I mean, it, it, they, they've raised billions over the year, billions with a B. I mean, they, they raised 50-some million dollars a year for literacy, and that affects everyone, men, women, child. And when people that can't read start to read, everyone's better because everyone's more productive. But outside of that, this First Lady, Barbara Bush, has more schools, 
hospital wards, libraries, other things named for her than almost any other first lady. And the work that she did specifically in Maine at the um, Barbara Bush Medical Center in Portland is, is almost unprecedented. This woman would spend her birthdays at the hospital reading to children that were ill, reading to children that were recovering, recuperating, some with terminal diseases. Uh, the time she spent there and the, and, and the money that she raised for those children was just remarkable. And, and that was more out of the limelight and, and out of the public eye. It was just doing what was right and doing what was good because she had the means and the platform to do it. And she was good at it. She's good at raising money. She's good at getting people to circle around her. And that's because of that genuine quality, the stuff that I've mentioned before, where White House uh, employees, stewards, pastry chefs, secret service agents, administration people, people that had worked in multiple administrations, all of them, hands down say that Barbara Bush was their favorite first lady and the one that they were really sorry to see move out. And that's all politics aside. That's just a good human being. How do you think the loss of her child way back when determined who she became, who she later became? I remember watching um, a, a brief snippet of an interview with Barbara Walters way back when talking about this, probably when the book came out. And uh, even talking about the loss of that child now, she, uh, well, we, we saw her tear up, which you normally never, this was, this lady was an iron horse. Um, Absolutely. And, and this, you know, Barbara Walters in her way uh, cer- certainly tapped into that emotion. H- how do you think it changed her? Well, I, I cannot imagine personally uh, uh, what it's like to lose a, a daughter. I don't, I don't, I, that's never happened to me. I, I know people where it hasn't something that most people uh, uh, would, would never get over. Yeah. And, it, and it's how she got over it. Of course she mourned it. Of course it's something that she carried right to the very end, something that would make her tear up and she and her daughter's well represented in the in the scrapbooks that she has uh, archived at the bush library in in college station but the bushes and especially barbara bush were people that took all life experiences good bad and other and made themselves stronger because of it you know there's a lot of first ladies that lost children more in the 1700s and 1800s of course but in the 1900s first ladies and presidents lost children it did happen and those that, that, that used it to power them on and to be stronger because of it were the ones we remember like Barbara Bush and the ones where it affected their work and affected their presidencies and, and administrations. They, they, they don't fare as well in, in history, and the Bushes were just those kind of people. Uh, do you think, she, well, more popular than her husband and her son? Yeah, you know, and, 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 and a lot of people are saying that, and, it, and it's true. I, I, I think so. But, but historically, these women are always more popular, or right. usually more popular than their husbands. Because keep in mind, this, this job, I'm making air quotes now, it's not really a job. It's, it's just that they're the wife of the president. This is not an elected position. This is not a paid position. Barbara Bush's daughter-in-law, Laura Bush, another first lady, said the role of the first lady is up to the first lady, and she can make it her own. Hmm. There's no first ladies 101. You can't learn how to do this. It's life experience. And when you've got someone with as much life experience as Barbara Bush, it doesn't matter how good her husband is, is because her husband is a policy man. A, 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 the president is a political man. Yeah. He has enemies. There are people across the aisle where Barbara Bush basically had no enemies. So uh, wildly, wildly popular, always polls so high, and, and people think of her as, as a maternal figure or, or a grandmother, very, yeah. very rightfully so. Uh, who do you think was the most popular out of all first ladies? Can there be a favorite? Can there be a best? Uh, or is that impossible simply because they're all different? Well, it is impossible because they are different. I mean, there's, there's some that, 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 uh, that, that always pull higher than others for their contributions. There are some that, that contributed things that people just didn't know about that should probably pull higher. Uh, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt always polls so high and is always, uh, uh, you know, at the top of the list of people's favorites. And she was the longest sitting first lady. Her husband, FDR, elected to an unprecedented four terms in office, which is now constitutionally illegal. It can't happen and probably never will happen again. But, you know, uh, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy, she gets, uh, you know, wild accolades, rightfully so, for for the work she did uh, uh, restoring the White House and making it a national uh, historic landmark. But Pat Na- or, uh, um, 
Yeah, Pat Nixon collected more historical artifacts for the White House collection than any other first lady. But Pat Nixon doesn't get that credit. Uh, Lou Hoover is, is probably one of the most educated and, and, and qualified women to ever be in the White House as first lady or president. But we don't think about Lou Hoover because of the Great Depression. So, you know, picking a favorite, picking a, 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 a best or a greatest is impossible, and so many of these women are, are so far and above men, women, and children of their day, of their time, and the work that they do, being that it is unpaid and unelected, is, is just, just makes it that much more remarkable. Uh, it is a tough job, and like you said, one that they're thrown into. Uh, wh- how do you think Americans view the current First Lady? Um, it's, it's kind of a 50-50, and that's where her poll numbers sit, you know, when when she was uh, first campaigning with her husband, I said uh, she could be the next Jacqueline Kennedy, and, and I got a, a little bit of flack for that. And, and it's just in her style, in her grace, uh, in her international flair, um, typically the first ladies that are most popular are the young and attractive and those with young families. And Melania Trump has all that. You know, she speaks five different languages. She's the second first lady in history, Ka- uh, um, Louisa Catherine Adams being the first and you know that that's that's back in the in the 1800s. So so she's a very unusual first lady that that has that international flair, that has an intelligence, and she has a quiet. She has a very quiet backroom effectiveness, like a Bess Truman or a Pat Nixon, or even to a certain extent a Barbara Bush, who's not looking for all the credit, but just looking to use that platform to help people, no matter what. And we never see Melania Trump happier than when she's working with children or helping children or doing something that has an effect on on the positive lives of of children. And, you know, the more people see of Melania Trump, the more they like her, the more her poll numbers go up, the more work that she does. So, you know, she's easing into a role that at at first she was probably very uncomfortable with and didn't expect or, or didn't didn't get into her marriage thinking that that's where it would go. Mm. And that describes a lot of first ladies as well. But I think she's doing some good work there, and I think that uh, history will look back fondly on her for it. Andrew Oak has been with us, expert on U.S. first ladies, and author, speaker, award-winning television producer, firstladiesman.com to find out more. Andrew Oak, as always, thanks for the time. Much appreciated. Scott, anytime. It's a pleasure to be on with you, sir. Want to hear more? Download the podcast on iTunes or Google Play and listen to The Scott Thompson Show weekdays from noon to 3 on AM 900 CHML.